Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Bell. I'm from the Thotpaco Creek tribal town and I'm a filmmaker in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So first of all, I want to say thank you to Unity for asking me to be a speaker for the virtual conference this year. I'm sorry we couldn't be in person, but hopefully I can meet you guys in the future. I'll talk about how I got started and just the road that led me to where I am now. Even though it's a crazy time right now with the coronavirus going on and just a lot of other things in the world, I feel like now is the best time to be a storyteller. So hopefully my story can inspire you guys to go out, pick up a camera, and go tell that story you want to tell from your perspective, your point of view. And for me as a filmmaker, that's what it's all about. So going back to the beginning, uh, I was born in Oklahoma, raised in Oklahoma, but I felt like two things that, you know, I was always into as a child was movies and basketball. You know, watching movies, I always remember watching movies with my dad. I'd say around eighth or ninth grade, I was really into documentaries, and my first documentary that I really was into was a film called Hoop Dreams. That for me, you know, really changed something in me. It inspired me to, man, who are these guys, you know, walking around with a camera, filming these two kids trying to make it? That for me was really, you know, inspiring. And that documentary is what really, I guess, opened my eyes up to independent filmmaking. Fast forward years ahead, get through high school, you know, go to college for a few years, then come back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I worked a bunch of odd jobs at that time. I'm not really doing anything with my life, I feel. Still on my mind is, I'm always watching this film. I've seen this movie, you know, years, years ago. How do I do that, you know? How do I just pick up a camera, follow the story, and learn how to tell a story like that? And it's something I wanted to do. So in 2014-ish, just started saving up, and I just decided I'm gonna buy my first camera. And the first camera I bought was a, a Sony A57 from Best Buy. And it shot video, and it also took photos, but as far as the video side, I took a trip out to go see my brother who was in the Navy at the time. And I just decided, oh, I'll just film a little bit with this camera while I can. So from there, it was kind of like, I really caught the, uh, I guess you say that bug, you know, you really, once you start doing it, you just feel hooked and that's where I was at. So my first idea for a documentary was, you know, I'm gonna film this uh, native artist that I met at a festival, a film called Native Evolution. And all this time, you know, it was just, I didn't know what I was doing, just practicing basically, and putting a story together. After I got done filming with them, I just created a little trailer, threw it up on social media. From there, uh, I got contacted to enter this uh, film competition in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And so I did, I entered it, and it ended up winning uh, Best Documentary, and also Best of Class at the Santa Fe Indian Market. Once you win something, it's really like, oh man, you know, you really want to get out and do it again. So that's what I decided to do right after that was, I'm going to start, you know, thinking of a new idea, you know, who else could I film? Next documentary would be a short doc on native artist Stephen Paul Judd, just called Dig It If You Can. And also I felt like, you know, I was still practicing, still learning. How could I shoot it differently? Each one I tried to mix it up somehow. I ended up submitting to the same festival that next year and that ended up winning Best Documentary, which is really cool. And around that time, after I got done making that film, Standing Rock was going on. And at that time I was contacted by actor Adam Beach to go up to Standing Rock and film whatever I could and try to get the native perspective of the story because we've seen a lot of uh, news outlets that were out there kind of telling what they wanted to show on their news programs. But we would really wanted to talk to tribal members that were from there, from that area. And so that whole experience at Standing Rock was uh, something I'll never forget, you know, seeing all these indigenous people from all different tribes across the world fighting for the same cause. It was, uh, you know, it was history. So that work I am uh, really proud of.
So at the end of 2017, I really felt like I wanted to challenge myself to do something different, and that was to write a short film. I had all these ideas growing up, but one thing I always kept revolving around was basketball. I just wanted to explore ideas that I had in my mind in a film. And I just really kept working on it, rewriting it all the way through 2018. And finally, in early 2019, I submitted it to the Sundance Native Filmmakers Labs, and it won. It got selected. I went off to Santa Fe, New Mexico for a week to do a, basically like a film workshop. And it really encourages you as a filmmaker to say, you know, I am a director, I can do this. In December 2019, I finally got to production on my short film, shot it within two days. The whole experience was just something that I love and I feel like I always want to be doing. Right now I'm in post-production on the film and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys real soon. So literally right around the time that I started amping up pre-production on my short film Spirits, I get an email from Rolex, the watch company. And from there they told me I was nominated to apply for a mentor and protege program. And so I did. I applied and I didn't hear back for about a month or so. And they said, you're one of the finalists, Kyle, and we want you to come out to New York to meet uh, the mentor this year working with Rolex and it's gonna be Spike Lee. And Spike Lee, he needs no introduction. <laughs> you know, he's been making movies for 30 years plus now. I feel like in a lot of ways he started out just like me, you know, with nothing. You know, how can you get the money to get a camera, to get the film? Spike just tells stories that he wants to tell and stories that he knows. And for me, that's just super inspiring because I, I want to do the same thing that he's doing. So I'm very thankful and honored for this opportunity to work with Spike Lee. I feel like there's no magic answer to making it. All you can do is create work that you want to make and others will see your work. You know, I don't know what city or what state you guys are at, but nothing's stopping you from picking up your phone or saving up and buying a camera and going out and telling your stories that you want to tell. And one thing I felt like that's really helped me along the way was having you know, people around you that are going to be positive and encourage you to keep going, to keep pursuing your dreams, whatever they are. Maybe it's not film, maybe, maybe you want to do something else. Keep positive people around you and have a positive mindset that you're going to do this and this is my dream, this is my goal, and I'm going to make it come true. You have to tell yourself that. I know a lot of you guys are young. You may not know what to do with your life right now, and that's fine. I didn't figure this out until I was, what, 28, 29, uh, that I wanted to be a filmmaker. But here I am on that path, and I'm just going to keep going down it the best I can. So again, I just want to say thank you to Unity for asking me to speak. If you got any questions at all, please reach out to me. I'm on social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook, KyleBillFilms.com, and you can check out some of my work there. So yeah, just stay positive, keep working, and don't give up.